Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Stars Themselves. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to Doctor Who Season 1, Episode 1. I believe it's titled Star Babies. I am so excited. <laughs> I mean, we are, we are embarking on a nearly two-month journey right now. I, I don't know what to expect. I haven't watched trailers for this season. I will say briefly the things that have been spoiled for me. Actually, let me shorten my chair a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I feel better about this. Also, I've got my TARDIS friend with me and my TARDIS and Sonic necklace that I made. So, yeah, just letting you know. And my hair has grown out. I'm a little off topic right now, but my hair has grown out. I pinned it back here because it's grown out so much that like I have thick intense bangs right here and it just felt too like early 2000s Justin Bieber and I I'm not about that life so it is what it is today I need a haircut <laughs> I'm super short of breath as well sorry guys my heart has been acting up the last few days I uh, get that as a side effect from taking melatonin so I've not taken melatonin for the last few days, but my heart's still acting up and I've still got kind of a shortness of breath thing. Oh, I was going to say the things that I have found out about this uh, upcoming season. I Like I said, I haven't watched any of the trailers, any of the promos. I have tried to meticulously avoid them. I have, I believe, muted all of the Instagram accounts that I've Man, it's so hard to talk with these in my ears. I have muted like all the Instagram accounts that I have followed over the years related to Doctor Who because I'm such a big fan that I have followed a lot of like behind the scenes people and a lot of people that share like edits and excitement about new stuff coming and all this stuff. And so I just get flooded with spoilers when this stuff comes around. So I muted all of them early on. So I have seen very, very minimal stuff. There has been a lot of intense promotion from Disney+, Plus, which has been very hard to avoid. Very exciting, though, because I think it will bring in new fans, and that's always super exciting. I love that Disney is promoting it so much. So what I have not been able to avoid, by the way, uh, it just came out a minute ago. So <laughs> I'm a little bit late, but I'm so excited. Okay. Oh my gosh, they released three episodes? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, they did just, they did release two, but they put The Church on Ruby Road as the first episode of season one on here, which is interesting. Makes sense, I guess, but okay. Anyway, off track. Things I knew. The title of the first episode is Space Babies. I just found out today, unfortunately, <laughs> that I think there's something about prehistoric Earth, maybe dinosaurs, in the first episode. I also know the next one is The Devil's Chord. I didn't know until just now that the second episode was going to be The Devil's Chord, but I kind of thought it probably would be because that's the one they've been promoting the most besides Space Babies. I know in The Devil's Chord there is the villain called Maestro. I'm not sure if they are introducing that character in episode two or in episode one. Guessing episode two, I kind of think they might be two separate stories, which I'm so excited about. Oh, because I was thinking about that earlier today and I was like, man, I wonder if they're going to do a two-parter for the first two episodes that they released today or if it's going to be two separate stories. And what I wanted it to be was two separate stories because I didn't, I, I do love two two-parters, but I was like going into this new season of Doctor Who, I kind of really want to start it with two different stories on the first day. So I don't have to wait like a whole nother week to see another story. I get two stories today, which is super exciting. I hope. So I think other than that, all that I know is that I think Shuti in an interview at some point said something about this season being about family, which honestly didn't feel very spoilery because after Church on Ruby Road, I think it, it was expected to me at least that we would be talking about family this season. Likely Ruby went with the doctor when she found out he was a time traveler because she wanted to find out who her mom is, find out who her parents are, you know, find out who her family is. So I'm going to guess that that will either be like a this season story arc where she's trying to find her family and she does at the end, or maybe it will be her whole run however long that might be. The other thing, I did hear a rumor a while ago that she was going to stop being the companion at the end of this season. And I was super sad to hear that, for one, because I like her, <laughs> 
but also because I just didn't want to know if that was the case. I didn't want to know she was going to be leaving and I was trying so hard to avoid spoilers. I have since heard that I think she has said that that's not true, that she is staying longer than a season. So good news. I wish I didn't hear all that stuff, but good news that she's staying if that's true, which I think it is. I am so stinking out of breath and I am motor mouthing right now. So I think that's all I needed to cover and I'm just going to head into the video. But before I do that, if you're interested in a little bit of chat, for one thing, the Aurora Borealis might be visible where I live today, which is crazy. That like never happens. And I'm super excited. <laughs> so I'm going to go somewhere with my parents and we're going to try to find somewhere to see it. And I really hope it works out. It's supposed to be KP8, I think, for three hours. KP7 for a little bit before and after that, but KP8 for a bit, if you guys know about Aurora Borealis stuff. I very vaguely know. <laughs> but basically, KP8 is a, is a stronger Aurora, and that's going to be probably visible where I am, which is really very unusual. So exciting. If that happens, and if I get pictures of it, I might just put them in the edit for you guys here. <laughs> so if it did happen, then enjoy. <laughs> and before I go into the video, if you'd like to see full-length reactions to this episode, and every other episode from this season, and all the specials, and episodes to other TV shows and movies that I've watched, definitely consider becoming a member. There's a link to do that in the description of every video, and there's a join button if you'd like to join the channel. I might start a Patreon soon, hopefully. I also have super thanks if that's a way you'd like to help support me, but you don't want to do the monthly membership thing. And otherwise, thumbs up, nice comment, subscribe, turn on the bell. That felt really awkward, but you know, all of those things are super helpful to help promote and support this channel because the engagement just helps the algorithm. So. Thank you, thank you very much, and let's get into the stinking episode. Yes, Russell T. Davies. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, I did hear also that Moffat will be writing some episodes, which I'm very excited for. We're starting immediately from where we left off. I'm obsessed. I'm so glad. I'm the doctor. Dun, 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 dun. It's called the TARDIS. Ooh. <laughs> That's fun, you can change the lights with a snap and the skipping, that's so cute. I wanna know your name. Yeah, that's uh, that's tricky. Yeah, it is. They were kind of posh. They'd use titles like the doctor or the bishop or the Rani. Say doctor for a thousand years and it becomes my name. Hmm, that's a weird way to explain that in my opinion. It's always been much more mysterious and layered than that, except for when when 12 said he was Basil, but <laughs> yeah. Once I landed in 1963 and he used to have police boxes on street corners. 1963? Yeah. Yeah. My world is called Gallifrey. Gallifrey? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's exposition a little bit. Ruby, it's gone. It's gone. But well done. I honestly so appreciate that he's being open with her, unlike 13 was with her companions. It was a genocide and they died. Mm. I am the last of the Time Lords. Except the Master is probably still around because of that ring. Right? Is that what that was? I don't remember. Trying to see. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, starting it with the Sonic. Uh, what? Zero gravity. <laughs> okay, that's a bit new. 150 Strange. million years in the past. Oh my gosh, yep, prehistoric Earth. You are kidding. Don't be so ridiculous. <laughs> Understandable response, Ruby. Are there dinosaurs out there? I don't know. <laughs> I love how, like, he's got, like, this childlike wonder in his eyes. It's so fun. Wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> is it safe? No, never is. What if I change history by stepping on a butterfly or something? Who steps on butterflies? It didn't 12 say that? Uh, come here, butterfly. Come here, rabbit. <laughs> Watch her actually step on a butterfly, though. That. Oh my gosh. That's so beautiful. <laughs> oh. Yeah, me too, Ruby. Oh, the colors are so vibrant. One day, this is Wyoming. Wow. A little town called Green River. Wow. 
Yes, please get- Oh, I knew it! I knew it! Oh my gosh, I knew- did I do something wrong? Um, I... If you have made an incorrect accusation, I will have to kill you. Did we really change history again? Ruby's history. Regeneration energy? Okay, that was cool. That was cool. Also, I mean, yeah, he totally could do that because, like, you know, he's the timeless child. He's He's got infinite regenerations, likely. I mean, the whole Twelves thing was a, a Time Lord made-up concept. He's... The original, you might say. Butterfly compensation switch. <laughs> compensation switch. <laughs> A year. Um, two, two. Two. One. one five. Five. Oh. Oh. Five. Six. Six. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I do love. Oh, this is fun. I do love that we're getting to see them kind of just drop off in random places just for the fun of it, because that's something I've really wished we did more of in Doctor Who, because sometimes they'll talk about it and they'll be like, oh, we went to this place and we did that thing. We saw Space Florida, you know, things like that, but we don't get to see it. I love seeing it. It is a space station connection overload. Oh my gosh, his face, jeez. That was scary. Oh my gosh, I love how protective he is. That's so cute. Is that a space baby? Rivet, is there such thing as monsters? Oh yeah, totally. Just aliens. Creatures you haven't met yet. Yeah. Pretty accurate to Doctor Who. Oh, oh, wow. Run, run, run. Oh yeah, I think I did hear from someone that the first episode was gonna be scary. And maybe it was Shoot he said that in, a, in an interview? But yeah, I think I heard it was gonna be scary. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I love them. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Why did it give me the shivers? Yeah, yeah, good point. I was like, whoosh. Well, something that preys on fear again, maybe? Something like the fly creature in the confession dial? Oh my gosh, what? Oh, oh we're on a baby farm. <laughs> I guess this is how people have babies in the future. Baby with you and baby. I was gonna say the same yeah, thing to you. Yeah, From baby to baby. Yeah. Coincidence? What for? Food? Food? What? What? <laughs> I mean, you did just see the goblins, man. Ooh, kind of reminiscent of the end of the world, hey? Beautiful. The human race, we survived. Oh, the way he's looking at her. We went to the stars. <laughs> oh. Your people are gone. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so close to my period. I'm going to be crying. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Not sorry, though. I have freedom. Oh my gosh, I love this. No, I was really concerned about the idea of him being, like, the healed version of the Doctor, essentially. Because I didn't want them to erase the depth. Oh, I see the blue in his hair now. I didn't want them to erase the depth in his character, but they are not. They just It just seems like he's he's healthier. He's got a healthier mental health. He's got more self-awareness, but he still has the depth, which I love. Speak one language by this point. A bit like Cantonese. Oh, interesting. Okay. TARDIS translates. It's got huh. perception filter. I love it. I love how much, I mean, it is expositional, I suppose, but I think they're doing it well. And I love how it's introducing new fans in such a way that it's it's telling them all the things they need to know, essentially, but doing it well. I like it. One phone call. <laughs> oh, yep, and this again. Phone her. Your mom, Ruby, call your mom. Oh. Yeah, Carla, I gotta get that in my brain. I gotta remember her mom's name. I couldn't remember it last time. Yes, Mum, obviously. Oh. You just ran out the door ten seconds ago. This is kind of classic Russell T Davies, but I'm not mad about it. It's cute. That's Ruby's music, isn't it? That's her theme? That was fun. First time I think we've had it in this show yet. No, no, we're not doing Boss Baby. Please, no. Okay, why? I will say though it's kind of impressive that they're making it look like this, but it's probably CGI. Oh no! No, no, no. Wait, is this like Space Neverland? <laughs> what? 
What? <laughs> Space babies! <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, they are making it entertaining, I will say. Oh my gosh, all the drawings on the wall, this is hilarious. But what about that monster? Mommy and Daddy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! <laughs> This is so bizarre. What in the world? Okay, I love how goofy this is. It's it is very Doctor Who goofy, and I love it. Show mommy and daddy what a good job we've been doing. Make them proud. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is actually kind of adorable. I'm surprised they're getting me with this. We took over. We were very brave. Wow. That's kind of heartbreaking. It's so interesting and weird, though, that they have the cognitive capacity to communicate like this. But they also seem to have somewhat childlike emotional intelligence, if that makes sense. This is the doctor. Oh. Away your friends. Okay, I love seeing this because we know she had so many foster siblings. Ugh. This is really heartwarming. When was the last time that you had a hug? Never. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. Oh my gosh, I'm not even a baby person. I don't even want to have kids, but this is really, really cute. You lot grew up, but you stayed the same size. Baby size. You lot grew up, but stayed the same size. We're not meant to be like this. Did we grow up wrong? Oh. A popsicle. Nobody grows up wrong. No. Oh. You are what you are, and that is magnificent. There's no one like me in the whole wide universe. And that's true of everyone. <laughs> it's a superpower. Oh my gosh, it's casually falling apart over here. Ugh. I wonder how old they're supposed to be, in, like, emotionally. Like, mentally, I mean. Oh gosh, I should have brought tissues. Why didn't I do that? Shoot. Got a running nose. Oh my gosh. Okay, I hate this. We have visitors, children. Noses must be blown. Yeah, noses must be blown. <laughs> oh my gosh. Blown. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know what? I, I am pausing this. It makes it more difficult for editing, but I'm pausing it and I will be right back. Okay, nose blown. It is hilarious that I had to blow my nose at the same point that the babies did. <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, I got tissues, so we're good. Is that your pet dog? Oh wow, they are legitimately terrified. The Pokemon. The bogeyman. Oh great, that's scary. There is no such thing as the bogeyman. Bogeyman! No, stop it! No, 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 stop it! Man is scared of the bogeyman. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is an interesting contrast of how they're handling this. What would I need to go there for? Oh for God's sakes! Three five seven, come on! But is that a real person? Or is it AI? Or maybe it's one of their parents? Maybe the parents were trapped by the bogeyman? The bogeyman? In my accent? Listen to my hearts. Two hearts? Plural. <laughs> More exposition. <laughs> if things connect, then you are connecting like crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if I, if I said my theory about her, but I did theorize that maybe she's the doctor's granddaughter. Maybe she's Jenny's daughter. Or maybe that was Ruby that was walking away because the boots looked like Ruby's boots, but that hand looks interesting. Wow, interesting way to do that kind of flashback thing. It's snowing. Oh, it, what? Wait, did the doctor make that happen? Did the doctor do that with his memory? It's like a memory just came through. That's really weird. This is weird. I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. I wonder who she is. Your mother. Yeah. Sid. 
Total 357. Yeah, so Nanny is a person. They are gorgeous. Why would you hide? Because I don't want to see them die. And I don't want them to see me die. Yeah. The boogeyman. What is that thing? Yeah, what is it? That's the question. Why was I so scared? I've met a million ugly bugs. I'm an ugly bug. <laughs> you've got babies. You've got a nanny. And you've got a boogeyman. Yeah. It's a children's story. And every story has its hero. Oh no. Oh no. No. It's not Eric. Eric, get out of there. Oh my gosh. Does he have like a wooden sword? Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I mean, if anyone can help, it's the Doctor and Ruby, right? But I mean, the Doctor's terrified, but he's done st stuff when he's terrified before. I love Ruby. She said there's no such thing as the boogie. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh my god, it's my fault! <gasps> oh, uh, Doctor, go after her! Thank you! Oh my gosh. Man, she is brave. No, he can't be dead. That's dark. I mean, I know Doctor Who has killed a lot of characters, but I think not. Pokemon! Pokemon! <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so brave. What in the world? Wow, I love this. I, I don't know, I get Sleep No More vibes from this episode for some reason. The monster just feels very similar to Sleep No More. Which is not a compliment. <laughs> but this episode is better so far. Yeah, I knew he wasn't dead. Of course not. I think it's the glitching in the camera. The camera switches. Reminds me of Sleep No More and the lighting. Yeah, regulate yourself, Doc. <laughs> and go help him out. Oh, it's afraid of fire. Good to know. Please, with a blank <laughs> yeah, that's a bit scary. Oh. <laughs> Just called the other one? How did he know that would work? I guess how does he know anything would work until he does it, huh? Telling me to leave you on your own, man. <laughs> oh, doctor. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, she's not about that life. Which, of course, he will enjoy, because that's like him. Yeah, this stuff is slippy roots, thank you. Oh. Ew. Gross. Ew. Ew. Oh, what a great first trip. Oh my gosh. Don't call me roots! Are we always there, Joss? <laughs> Don't call me roots! Oh, that's horrendous. I'm so sorry, Ruby. The Pokemon is roaring at 17 hertz. That's exactly oh, designed to make you scared. That's interesting. I like that concept. But does that mean the babies really don't have mothers and fathers? I mean, I kind of thought that at the beginning, but then they said, oh, our mommy and daddy are here, you know? But I guess their mommy and daddy is the machine then. That's interesting. What? Oh, man. What? Pokemon is made out of what? It's not. The machine is literal. Yeah. Boogers. Yeah. The nose blowing. Oh, it's all the baby's snot. Oh my gosh, that's disgusting. That's so gross. Yeah, and she's got it all over her hair. That's disgusting. Yeah, it literally is sleep no more. It, it literally is sleep no more. I'm not really about that. This has been an entertaining episode, but... Hopefully there's better ones. <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh, poor Ruby. That could ever happen to anyone don't laugh! <laughs> He's wheeze laughing. It's hilarious. Wow, this is literally sleep no more. I keep saying that, but it is. Oh my gosh. It is one of the children, Jocelyn! It is one of the children? What, because it was made by the machine? What, he wants to save it? Left! I appreciate a little bit of the harsh doctor. You're hurting him. Stop it, Nanny. Stop it. 
You're hurting him. Stop it. So they're scared of him, but then they have compassion on him. Why does he want to save I his life? Last of the Time Lords. And he's the only of his kind, I guess. I, but he's scary. Are we really saving this creature? No one else like me exists. The only one of his kind. Hmm, okay. This theme. My gosh, Doc, you are... You are good through and through, aren't you? <laughs> you just really are. That felt just as condescending as when Amy said, a boy and his box off to see the universe. <laughs> My gosh! Okay, that was actually clever, but yikes. You save them all. <laughs> this is falling flat for me. I don't know. I don't know how you guys felt about it. I mean, I have I have enjoyed episodes where the monsters are like you know saved and that we realize that they're not what we thought they were. But this is like I don't understand. Favorite monster is fine. <laughs> Turns out that built up oppression hull 3B is from you! That's where it stacked up all your nappies. That's disgusting. Pile of nanny filter fizzle! I'm gonna have some things to talk about in my review. <laughs> and Russell T. Davies fans are not gonna like it. I'm sorry. Ruby Sunday. Oh, yay. I love that we got this moment. I'd love it if you came with me. Hmm. We did almost die. Every time. Hmm. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. <laughs> Yes, 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 There is one thing. Oh yeah, he's got to address that. Because of Rose. <laughs> On Ruby Road. Yeah. Absolutely never. Except I still kind of think that that might be her in that cloak. If I know anything about TV shows, when they hide the person's face, you likely know them already. Whether it's her or someone else that we've met in the past, I think we know who it is. We just don't know who it is. You know? <laughs> I think that snow was a warning. Hmm. I'm really glad he was clear and honest with her about that. I disagree. Hmm. We are gonna go see my mom. At Christmas. But her Carla, mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cute. Is he gonna materialize the TARDIS in their room? Yeah, he better. What's that noise? Oh, it's the best. I was really hoping that her family would find out. Oh, don't destroy their house while you're at it. Oh my gosh, into the ceiling? Are you kidding me? Blinking flip. Oh my gosh. You better repair that ceiling. That is so much worse than destroying the flowers at the ponds. Yeah. Interesting. I do love this kind of a companion story. It reminds me of the Impossible Girl and also... Oh, snow inside again. Hmm. Reminds me of the Impossible Girl and reminds me of... Oh no, I don't want to see next time. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, I knew it was the Beatles. I forgot to mention that in the intro. I I know that the Devil's Chord has the Beatles in it and also Maestro. Anyways, but I love that kind of storyline in Doctor Who, like the Impossible Girl and like Amy's daughter. Like the scans where Amy was pregnant, not pregnant, pregnant, not pregnant, and then you know what happened. I don't want to spoil it if you're watching this, but haven't watched that. 
And then, yeah, Clara, the impossible girl, all the stuff with that. I'm excited to see where they go with this direction. I like that it's got an overarching story arc sort of thing that's based on Ruby's story, which I really appreciate. I gotta say, this episode started out pretty good. I, I enjoyed a lot of the stuff at the beginning. For me personally, it kind of fell flat in the end. Just the way the story was resolved, I didn't really like it. I, I will say, so with Chibnall's era, a lot of the stories I didn't like how they ended them because they felt too easy or they felt too, you know, like, <sighs> simple or... I don't know. A, a lot of them just felt too easy. It felt like the explanation at the end just wasn't solid enough, you know, for my taste. I still did enjoy some episodes in his era, but that's how I felt for the most part. Moffat, in my humble opinion, is the best Doctor Who writer, at least for New Who. I've seen some of Classic, but not, not nearly all of it, so I don't know about Classic. But for New Who, Moffat is hands down the best author or best writer, I mean, in my opinion. Yeah, the, I so, yeah, the thing I didn't like about Chibnall's era was that often the ending would just be too easy. It wouldn't be a good enough wrap up to the story for me. And the thing I didn't like about Russell's era, don't get me wrong, I do like Russell's era, but it's not my favorite. Moffat's is my favorite. But I do like Russell's. There is a lot of really special episodes in that era, and I did start with Eccleston. So <laughs> I didn't start with Tennant. I didn't start with Matt. I started with Eccleston. So Russell T. Davies' era, it had a lot of episodes that fell flat for me. It had a lot of mediocre and kind of bad episodes, in my opinion. You know, I think the most popular, popularly disliked episode was Love and Monsters. I don't remember who wrote that. I think it was... Russell though. But yeah, Love and Monsters <laughs> is a it's a popularly not liked episode, but I know there's some people who really do appreciate it and and I've actually watched some reactions of people who enjoyed it and enjoyed it a bit more myself watching those. But just the worst episode of New Who in my opinion. <laughs> Love and Monsters. It it had a great concept, like the idea of the storyline was great. It was, it could have been fantastic. The only thing that just ruined it through and through for me was the monster. And I know it was a monster that was drawn by children and it was kind of like a special thing because of that. And that is special, but it just ruined it for me. But yeah, just so much of Russell's era, I feel like is very... I think it's a lot more episodic. And I and I say that knowing like the first series had the Bad Wolf storyline. There was like the Donna story arc and, and Martha had a story arc too and all that. But I feel like his seasons felt more disjointed to me than Moffat's. I also say that while knowing that some of Moffat's seasons, if not all of them, I think, have some random little episodes in there that are like random and <laughs> some that I really don't like but I also think that's a very Doctor Who thing so I'm not mad about it I I would be sad if they weren't in there because I think it's kind of like the DNA of Doctor Who in a way I'm rambling so much <laughs> but I just feel kind of passionately about this show but yeah Russell's era I just I felt like it was much more campy than Moffat's and I wasn't the biggest fan of the campiness. I I mean, I, I know that is part of Doctor Who and there is elements of that that I do really enjoy and that feel like the Doctor Who experience to me, which is very endearing and, and like, you know, close to my heart. But there's just a lot of Russell's writing that felt like over the top campy. And I think I've touched on this before in like the specials that a lot of his writing would take super emotional moments, like really emotional scenes, and then immediately undercut them with humor. And I really didn't like that about Russell's writing. I really didn't like that at all. And I that's one of the things I love about Moffat. Some people don't like it <laughs> because Moffat's writing can be very emotional and it can also be very roller coaster emotional. But I love that he lingers more in the emotional moments. I love that he makes those emotional moments hurt more 
because I think that just adds so much more depth to it. And I, I really appreciate that, but I don't like how Russell just kind of has the super sad moment. And then, whoa, there's a bride in the TARDIS, you know, <laughs> it just, it bothers me a bit. And then there's all those farting episodes with the Slitheen and I, there's just so, there's so much campiness. There's so much like fart humor. And even in this episode, literally, like we had the whole like layer of the ship or whatever that was all just their dirty diapers. And then the ship farted at the end. And it's like, oh my gosh, like classic Russell, classic the part of Russell's writing that I really don't like. Uh, I just, I don't know. I really didn't like that. I didn't like that element of it. I also, I really, I gotta say, it's happening a lot more in media these days. And there are very mixed and very strong opinions in the media. But I really don't like that more and more coarse language is being implied and sprinkled into in a sort of watered down way into children's and young like tween shows. I mean because I, I wouldn't call Doctor Who a children's show even though I think it originally was and some people probably still would call it that. I think it's it's kind of you know, a lot of adults love it, but it's also kind of aimed, I think, at a younger audience. Maybe not children per se, but just a younger audience. But with that said, like, I just, I, like, I didn't like all of the, I didn't like the nanny filter thing. I didn't like all that sort of implied cursing. And then even the doctor doing that. I mean, I thinking back to, to, um, Capaldi's last season there was a scene where Bill was talking and then she nearly said the s-word and it was cut off by like a I don't know a crowd yelling or something like that that it was kind of you know it was a little bit weird but I, I gotta say that felt that felt in character and it felt kind of comedic and fun how it was played off it felt like it fit the doctor doing that didn't feel like it fit for me. And not only did it not feel like it fit, but just so much of that, like, nanny filter, all that stuff, turn the filter off, it just felt very, like, forced. Like, it felt like they're trying really hard to make the adults be like, oh, haha, they almost said a bad word, you know? Like, and that's so childish to me. I don't know. I just... It's childish, but it's not, It's like it's not something that I think should be in shows aimed at young people. I don't know. Personally. I know there will be a lot of people that disagree with that, but I, it just felt, it, it felt cheap. It felt immature. And I, I don't know. I just, I didn't enjoy that. I think the episode could have totally left that out and been fine. <laughs> it wouldn't have like taken anything out of it for me. <sighs> yeah. So there's that. There's also the whole thing of like, oh, this thing was created to scare the babies. Let's throw it out the ship. I, I mean, it's not even like, it, it's just a being made out of boogers. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I was totally on board with it being thrown out. Like, honestly, <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only one, but I just, I felt like that shift from, oh my gosh, this has been created to scare the babies because this machine thinks babies needs fiction. Ba ne babies need fiction. They need a story. They need a scary boogeyman. So we made one. And then shifting from that to, oh my gosh, it's the only one of its kind. I'm the last of my kind. Oh man, you know, we got to save it because it's the only one of its kind and the poor thing. And it was like, it's boogers. <laughs> It's boogers put together by a machine. I mean, I, I kind of understand what they were going with that. And I do understand that it's a very Doctor Who thing to take something that they initially are like, this is a scary monster, and then have the Doctor have compassion on it and save its life or help people to change their opinions about it. And I do love that about Doctor Who. It just felt like it fell flat in this episode for me, personally. I don't know. There's more things that I could say about this. 
I, I will say positive things. I've been saying a lot of negative stuff. Positive things. I absolutely adore the Doctor and Ruby's relationship so far. They are so cute. I think I did hear from an interview, like reading in an article. I haven't really watched the interviews much, if at all, because I'm trying to avoid the sp spoilers. But I've read some articles here and there or some like little Instagram posts that I think will be less spoilery. But I think that Shuti said in an interview that he uh, would describe their relationship as like best friends, or it might have been Ru Ruby. It might, um, Millie Gibson. <laughs> Millie Gibson. It might have been Millie Gibson who said that actually, that they're like best friends, but also kind of like big brother, little sister kind of vibes. I totally felt that in this episode. I definitely felt the big brother, little sister also felt the best friends thing. Super cute. They're adorable. I love how protective the doctor is over her, but I also love how strong and brave and courageous she is. And it's kind of, it's kind of, what's the word? Uh, somewhat jarring, I guess, how much the doctor is laughing at the danger here <laughs> and laughing at Ruby's fear and r laughing at Ruby's concerns. I do wonder if we're going to dive into that character trait a bit in this series, if there's going to be somewhat of a character arc in that way. I mean, like, 12, or, or yeah, 12 went from, like, super abrasive to learning how to be less abrasive and, you know, being, like, really sweet at the end. And it, it was a good character arc for him. He he learned how to communicate and connect better. And I wonder how that's going to be with Shuti, if that's going to, if like, what is he? 14? 15? Doctor? 15? I think, he, yeah, he's the 15th Doctor, right? Okay, so yeah, I wonder how it's going to be with 15, if he's going to have some sort of character arc where he kind of tones down a little bit of that like maniacal laughter. <laughs> it's not really maniacal, but just like this this laughter that he has when when they're in danger, when Ruby's upset or whatever, it, it was kind of jarring. Though it, it kind of fit with his character, it was also like whoa. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, that I hope that shifts and, and grows and morphs uh, over time. I do like, though, how emotionally intelligent in some ways he seems to be, how he appears to be in touch with not only strength and authority, I guess, <laughs> stepping into a, a more bold, authoritative role, but he also is in touch with that emotional depth and with a childlikeness, a childlike wonder, and he's also, like, you know, aware of and reconciling with his past and all the pain that is is living in his past but figuring out ways to try to uh, embrace and enjoy and love the things that he lives for now and thinking about that too like all the other doctors did that too they were a lot more heartbroken but they all had that playful, fun, childlike wonder about experiencing these new things. I just think that he's kind of at a further stage of that emotional healing in some ways. But as you know, if you've been to therapy for a long time, that emotional strength, that emotional healing, that emotional intelligence, that healing process through childhood trauma and all sorts of other traumas, is not linear and it does wax and wane so I wonder too if we'll see a bit of that with him because I don't really want him to be like this zen master you know I mean he's not he's not clearly he's not but just I don't really want him to be like perfectly fine you know <laughs> which I think that the specials kind of somewhat implied that he's like the the healed version of the doctor which yeah, I, I like how they're presenting it now, but I would like to see some more depth and some more unpredictability and some more sort of ups and downs for him. And, and I think, too, with this journey of this season, exploring Ruby's history, her, you know, her upbringing, her childhood, her 
birth, her birth family, I do wonder how much of that will also be simultaneously exploring the doctor's history. And I wonder if he's going to try to go find his planet, you know, where he's truly from, his people, and find out why he was left, you know? I'm very curious about where this goes. But I will say, yeah, this episode just... It's, it's a mid-episode for me. Not the biggest fan of it. But let me know in the comments what you thought of the episode. If you're still here watching this, I'm shocked, but thanks for being here. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you thought of the episode. Let me know what you thought of the reaction, if you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see continued reactions to this, I will continue to have them as full-length reactions for members. And I also, if you're seeing this on YouTube edited, then I will be posting edited reactions to this as well. I'm currently still deciding whether I'm going to pause Brooklyn Nine-Nine for a bit and upload edited reactions to these every other week or every week potentially for the next two months-ish, which is so much for me. But we'll see what's going to happen. If you do see this on YouTube as an edited shortened reaction, then know that I have decided to do that. <laughs> So they will continue. Otherwise, if you're seeing this as a member, we'll see. Maybe someday I will put up the edits. But yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And consider becoming a member if you want to. And like this video, leave a nice comment, subscribe, turn on the bell, all the stinking things. <laughs> Send a super thanks if you want to. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.